there is another image of her work, her personal work. And then uh, I would mention now uh, Ligia Clark's work, no? in which she says, we refuse duration as a means of expression. Here, she is very precisely, when she talks about duration, she is thinking of Bergson. We propose the act as the field of expression. In other words, the act can be individual or can be social, as we are going to see further on. And then we, we see the next one is um, Eloitisica's Tropicalia, a piece in which he brings in certain uh, aesthetical materials from the favelas, but mainly he tries to bring a certain delicate relationship of the, fa the, of the favelados, the, the dwellers of the favela with life, which was music, a kind of code of, of, of exchange, symbolic exchanges, the use of material, etc. And of course, uh, Oitsika for Brazil is maybe the major reference at the side of uh, together with Lispector. Now, during the dictatorship, which is a denial of the, of the participation of the individual, those works had a very important metaphorical uh, uh, force saying that you are necessary, your participation is necessary, your inputs, your investment of desire, your choices are fundamental for the existence of life. So it was not, let's say, a kind of, of uh, uh, compensation, but it was a way of acting, making people act in, in a, as I said, in, in, a, in another level. Because for the Brazilians, there is a maxim by Pedrosa again, that art is the experimental exercise of freedom. And this was said during the dictatorship. This is a work of an artist, Monica Nado, in Sao Paulo. She is dealing with, uh, uh, she worked with the, the dwellers to decorate their houses. They choose together the symbols that uh, they are going to use. But of course, the reference there is Oitsika. See, this is to show that there is a certain historicity within the, this Brazilian experience of our own. No? Here is Ligia Clark's project of uh, a web, a, a spider's web, in which people are connected. This is made of, of rubber, people are, are still doing it. And then Oitsika, this notion of color being beyond the grid. No? He first does monochromes that are spread around, then he takes the embodiment of color, which he calls bolides. And here they are the parangolé capes, which mainly are the experience of music, of uh, feeling the materials on your body, but acting with color. Of course, there is here a certain plurality of, of uh, senses, which comes from Merleau-Ponty. <clears throat> he, he said that making a work under those circumstances, which Sika said that, is a violation of what art making is, was all about, no? And making art would be the experience of every individual. This is 1967. Uh, I, I, I think I, I pushed this before I should have, so I go back to, to it. Sika. The, the idea here is that uh, when Bart is writing about the death of the author in 1968, Brazilian art had already decided the death of the artist. Which Sika called him a non-artist, and a Clark called herself an a-artist, or in other words, negating also the notion of being an artist. No, because for Bart there was a total being of writing, no literature. In other words, there was a fabric of citations, of, of exchange, which produced literature 
as a, as a, a collective voice. And uh, I, I don't have the image, but I mention an, a Costa Rican artist, Habakkuk, who make a video in which uh, Johnny, a beggar, is reading Roland Barthes' text on the Eiffel Tower. The reading is not fluent. Johnny is functionally illiterate. And uh, he could be in Sildo Meirelles' zero uh, uh, dollar bill. But here, again, what's behind Abacuc's uh, uh, discussion in his video is the clash between the fact that we are what we read at the same time in society, the major, a, a large portion of Latin American society cannot read or are functionally illiterate. They can read, but they, they cannot uh, uh, understand what they read. And then the next step regarding authorship, after the death of the author by Bart, I'd, I'd mention here the anxiety of influence, the text of Harold Bloom. No? He, again, has this idea that the, the literature is a collective construction, but you have certain personalities throughout history that set a standard. Shakespeare, for instance. And the anxiety of influence comes as uh, um, there is sometimes a resentment of the belated against those who uh, were the forerunners. I think in the diagrams of, of authority, of order, many artists, they, uh, uh, they evade the proper reference they should bring into the work to the other what was the actual contribution and of the other, and what should be the actual retribution of this other. This is what, let's say, in a very uh, uh, crucial moment, is behind this work of Sildo Meirelles. It's called the Money Tree. It's a bunch of 100 banknotes of one Cruzeiros, and the label declares value 200 cruzeiros. So this difference makes clear, makes transparent, let's say, the construction of value. Let's say, how art establish value. And in society, he says, there is a difficulty between the relationship of exchange value when art reaches the market and the use value. Because in this aspect, Marx says, the value of label is always omitted at that moment. I have to get some water. So here, we, we are dealing now let's say, the truth, if we can speak of that, of the diagram. What is those diagrams of otherness stand for? Have they attacked the fortress of truth, like Nietzsche or Foucault uh, uh, proposed? Are they diagrams of appropriation of the ca symbolic capital of the other? Or, or are they diagrams of the circulation of this capital? And here the, the, the notion of surplus value in the Marxist theory is necessary. The ultimate source of surplus value is unpaid surplus label. In artistic, in artistic diagram, the surplus value would be the unpaid symbolic surplus, surplus label labor. No? And a surplus, surplus value is the basis for capital accumulation. So before the art engagé from the 40s, from the 50s, the Stalinist orientation would be about the accusation of appropriation of the surplus value from the laborer. Here the artists want to inscribe that situation within the work itself 
as we will see soon.